Good soldiers follow orders. Alright guys, here he is on the shelf here. It is the new Bad Batch Captain Rex. Very excited to have him in the collection. He's in that new fancy box with the red sort of haze at the bottom. Indicating it is from the Bad Batch wave. So let's spin it around. On the back there we've got a lovely artist rendering. I'm loving the new sh the new little cape piece and stuff, very nice. And we've got a little writer which states Clone Com Cl try again. Clone Captain Rex served the Republic during the Clone Wars. He viewed military service as an honor and he always completed his mission. Awesome. All right guys, let's break him out of the packaging and take a closer look. <laughs> So here is Captain Rex out of the packaging, looking absolutely stunning. It is such a great figure. There are a few issues with it that I will talk about in a moment, but first of all, aesthetically, looks very nice, especially in the pose I'm currently using and the way I've got him stanced. But like I say, there are a few little bit of issues that I will get to. Um, I know this figure is very hard to come by in the United States, as this is actually a Walmart exclusive action figure. And obviously distribution in America is a little bit different to here in the UK. Obviously we don't have Walmart, so here in the UK this came to our online retailers. However, stock was hard to get hold of. It wasn't an easy figure to get this time round. And this was even one of the figures that I pre-ordered. This is actually one of the last figures I pre-ordered. Um, well, <laughs> it's the last figure to arrive on pre-order. I pre-ordered it a long time ago, but the stock just wasn't there over Christmas. And it seemed to take forever to arrive, even though I saw some of my friends already had it. Very weird. I know distribution's a, a, a thing, but yeah, God, crazy. But I'm finally glad to have it. And it is a nice upgrade from our previous Captain Rex, which we will look at today. Because this is the original Captain Rex that I got, the one that came in the big blue box. Was it Hascon exclusive or something? I remember the big blue box, uh, th this one came in and he came with a load of weapons. But um, yeah, we've got the old one and we've got the new one, so we will do a little bit of side-by-side -side action as well. First of all, the figure itself, let's look at the articulation. So what I like about this figure, first of all, is the fact that the helmet does come off pretty easily. It's not like the old one that took forever to come off, obviously meaning that it's not as tight, so the face sculpt shouldn't scuff up as much as the other one did. The head is on a ball joint, so you can make him look up, down, left and right, and all that stuff. There's no pivot in the head, though. It is stiff, so it's just left and right action and up and down. Arms lift up the side hinge and also rotate. There's double hinged elbows on this one, with rotation at the bicep, and hands are on ball joints. We do have a waist swivel that it is hindered by a lot of the weapon, by a lot of the uh, cloth pieces and the belt and stuff, so it is a little bit hindered. Legs duly forwards, backwards. Uh, there is double hinged knees on this one, and the feet are on rocker and pivot with display holes. Should you wish to use a display base, not that you're going to need to. I've never had never had trouble standing this one up. So first of all, the helmet has been upgraded on this one. He does come with the new visor pieces, so they do move independently. So you can move them together like so, or you can push that one back up. And just have the visor piece down, or vice versa. Um, it does pop off though from time to time, which is annoying. So please be careful. Well, that one's warping now as well. It's like popped out and it's like staying out now. Woo! Hope not. Uh, but yeah, the design on the helmet's pretty nice. Got a bit more um, scuff than the previous one. And it is a little bit bigger. In case you were wondering. Because I know a lot of people are going to ask. So this is the old figure. This is the new helmet. And it does fit on, obviously, perfectly. Um, a little bit looser than you would probably like. But for displaying, it's going to be fine. All the clone troopers, though, I notice have the same problem. Especially when they have something around their neck, like this figure and this figure. The helmets don't sit flush. So both figures have something around the neck. And this one especially, because it's got a big cloth piece. When you put the actual helmet on, you can still see the bottom of his face. So you have to kind of have him looking down or away on your diorama shots. So that you can't see the bottom of his face. <laughs> now that does annoy me a little bit. But I'm, I'm actually going to be taking this shawl off of this figure. I like it, don't get me wrong. But I'm probably going to use this on a custom elsewhere. Um, so I'm probably going to remove this today. So we will look at what's underneath the figure as well. I'm just going to take the helmet off for now, just to make things a little bit easier. And we will remove the guns from his hands. And I am quickly going to remove this cape piece, as it will come off. Uh, the, the actual neck piece here is actually actually quite loose as it is. It's only tied on with a little bit of few stitches, so nothing too major. 
And that already is pulling off over his head pretty nice. So yeah, I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and remove that and see what it looks like without. Okay, and this is what it looks like underneath without the um, the armor pieces, sorry, without, without, without the shawl. And he does have slightly different armor pieces to the previous model as well. He's missing his big blue pauldron, which irritates me a little bit, I've got to say. <laughs> I wish he still had it, but yeah, it wouldn't have fit underneath the cape. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if he still had that at the time of Bad Batch, I can't quite remember. But this, this cape piece is very nice to be used on another thing. I'm tempted to put this on Cal Kestis because I hate the orange jumpsuit version, but I like I like Cal Kestis as a character, and obviously in the game you could put different shawls on him. I think this one would look very nice. Uh, might even put it on his original figure in the blue, actually. But yeah, it looks very cool, and it's obviously very nice. And yeah, I like the I like the cloth. And this is actually very easily removable with just a few stitches. As you see, it's already pulled away here at the side. So I mean, we could very easily take that hood pit off if we didn't want it. But yeah, it, for me. For me, I don't want this on my Captain Rex, just because this is going to be my new Captain Rex going forward. The helmet sits better when you don't have that cape piece underneath, and I think this is just a great version of Captain Rex. And uh, I might use the older one, take some of these pieces off, and just turn him back into a regular trooper. Uh, we'll see. But yes, either way, a great new addition to the collection, and I hope you guys agree. What are your thoughts on this new figure, though? Let us know in the comments down below. Uh, do you think I'm crazy for taking the shawl off? I know it's a rarer figure; it's harder to come by. Should I put the shawl back on him? Am I am I making am I am I causing sacrilege here? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. But yeah, I, as I say, loving this figure. Think it's great. Perfect addition to the line. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below, and thank you very much for watching. Before we end today's video, let's see what you guys are seeing. Cindy Dameron has contacted us to say, oh, that book is terrific for a visit to Batuu, aka Galaxy's Edge. Yes, Cindy, I'm very excited to get to Galaxy's Edge and I had to pick up that new book so I could see what all the backstory was. And I, I know that there's like, is he called Mobu, who, who, who used to own Droid Depot or something? I can't wait to jump into that book and really get involved in the lore of the land so that when I go, I'm a bit more knowledgeable when I'm making my videos. Plus, I'm very excited to use it in some of my toy reviews that I'm going to be doing while I'm in Galaxy's Edge. So just very excited overall. Stug138, he said, bruv, Wookiee Wednesday is awesome. Please keep doing it every Wednesday. We will. Don't worry. I've really been enjoying doing Wookiee Wednesday. <laughs> Wookiees are one of my favorite things on the planet, other than Ewoks. Ewoks are cool too. But, but Wookiees are one of my favorite species, so I had to call it Wookiee Wednesday, and I've been enjoying updating you guys on all the, all the new Star Wars news each week. So yeah, a lot of fun. And then finally, the Gallifreyan Knight, he's come back to us and said, Glad to hear I'm loving the weekly updates. Your passion for Star Wars is very evident in the videos, so please keep it up. You're a legend. Thank you very much, man. I really appreciate the support. It really, really does help out when you guys, you know, comment down below for me and subscribe and all that good stuff. So thank you to each and every one of you that do follow along my silly, wacky adventures each and every single week here on the channel. If you want your name appearing on the big screen just like this, then make sure you leave us a comment down below. If you ask us a question, I will probably answer it in the next video. But guys, thank you very much for watching. So guys, once again, we've come to a close on another video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this review today. If you have, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Subscribing really supports us. It really helps us out and helps us to keep making awesome videos like this. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And until next time, remember, good soldiers follow orders. Bye!